This is Father Adam. And during this time of intense worry and anxiety and depression, I'd like to share with you the secrets from the Bible to not have worry control you, but to have you control your worry. And how to do that? Well, Paul says in the letter to the Philippians, to rejoice always. Again, I say to you, rejoice, Paul says. And in all circumstances, through prayers and supplications, with thanksgiving, present to God your prayers and petitions, your wants and your desires, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your mind and heart in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then Paul says, continuing on, I have learned, I have learned, he says, to be content, which means to be joy-filled. That's why over, overall, that four-chapter letter, which is so short in the Bible, he finds himself in prison. He finds himself in jail. Paul says, I have learned, even in these circumstances, to be content, whether I'm up or whether I'm down. And I've been through ups and downs, Paul says. But I know and I have learned that I can do all things, meaning I can get through these circumstances through him who strengthens me. And this can only happen if you, like Paul, who came from a very prominent, affluent family, he came from a prominent family. If you learn that you are not entitled to anything, you are not entitled to even your life because everything in this life is a gift from God, including your freedoms. We are not entitled to live in the United States. We are not entitled to be able to go outside all the time. You are not entitled to anything. It's all a gift from God. And Paul has learned this. And he has also learned that as God has brought him through before. And notice he says, I have learned because he is a disciple. And we are to be disciples of the Lord Jesus. And the word disciple means a student that I am in the school of the master and Jesus is my master. He is my rabbi and I am learning. I am not a finished product and that I'm learning to be content. And how do I learn that I will make it through this? Well, through my past, through going through things because you've been through things before. And how is God teaching you? By bringing you through some more things like this coronavirus quarantine shutdown. God is bringing us through this. God has allowed this to take place in order to develop us and to form us and to teach us. And as God has brought you through before, God will bring you through again. That is why we need to have the attitude that Paul had, which is that my present circumstances, my present circumstances do not determine my future. And what I need to do is I need to look to my past. I have to have a flashback in order to have a forecast. And that the forecast, which is brought about by my flashbacks, will teach me that I can do all things and I can get through all things and I can make it, not on my own, but through him who strengthens me because it's not me who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Now, we have been through so much as a country before. We've been through the revolution when we had a king oppress us and send an army and we made it through that. We made it through the civil war. We made it through slavery. We made it through it. We made it through Jim Crow laws. We made it through the Great Depression in this country. We made it through two world wars. We made it through the Cold War, through the missile crisis. We made it through 9-11. 
We made it in 2008 through a recession. And if we made it through all these things, and all these things made us only stronger as a nation, more resilient as a people, we will make it through again. This is not the first time we've been through things. And all these things should only be the flashbacks for us right now. I want you to have a flashback of all that you've been through, that divorce you went through, how strengthened you became, all the abuse you went through. I want you to think of all those troubles and snares and tribulations that you have been brought through before. And as you were brought through them before, God is bringing you through this. And as I went through trials and tribulations before, I've been through so much. I will get through this as well. And I wouldn't be the person I am if God wasn't developing me through all those tough situations that I went through before. I, I just looking at myself, I went through being an immigrant to this country and I made it through that. That's my flashback. I, that was a tough experience to come here, leave my family behind, learn a new language. I went through my parents' divorce, a very terrible experience, and I made it through it. I made it through being bullied. I made it through weighing 325 pounds. I made it through all those things. And if I made it through that, and all that I've sustained in my life, I can do it all. That's my flashback. And it forecasts my beautiful future in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I do not look to my forecast in the news, which is negative and bringing me down. I look to my forecast. I look for the forecast to the flashback of my past. And I will make it through. Peace, you see, is the key to having joy. That's, isn't that what Paul says? Rejoice always and pray and make all your supplications, all your prayers known to God. And the peace of God will enter you. Peace is what we are about with thanksgiving. The thanksgiving that I make my prayer in will bring me peace. And I have to be thankful for every situation, including a coronavirus situation. The Bible doesn't say to be thankful only when things are going great in my life. No, the Bible says, thank God always. At all times, be thankful. If I thank God for the good things in my life, why should I not thank Him for the bad things? For all things work out for the good, for those who love God. And the Bible says, God will give us peace. Not that God will give us answers to our requests, but God will give us peace. You may be requesting not to have the cancer, but the point is not to be free of the cancer, but to be filled with peace. You may be requesting to be free of troubles and problems and suffering, but that is not what prayer is about. God knows everything that we need. God knows what we need even before we ask Him. So why are you praying? What is the purpose of your prayer? To have stuff given to you? No! God knows what we need before we ask Him. The purpose of prayer is peace, to be filled with peace in the midst of everything that I am going through. I can have addictions, depression, cancer, coronavirus all around me, sickness and death, but I can be at peace because prayer promises peace that I sit and I meditate with God and I am filled with peace. And people will look at you and they will say, you know, that person is crazy. They're a holy roller. Look at that person. And they can call you any name they may want to call you, but what do you care? As long as you are at peace. Because it's about peace. It's about your inner life. Not about what people are saying about you. Who cares what people say about you? What you should care about is what God says about you. It's the state of mind that we have to be in. Peace and joy are learned, not through a book, but through experience. 
And I feel sorry for any person who has never been through anything because it is my flashbacks that fill me with peace and forecast me with the bright and beautiful future that God has in store for me. You see, peace happens when you go through stuff. I am at peace because I know what the outcome looks like. And as evidence of that, I look to my past. Paul says, I have learned to be content no matter what I'm going through. I have peace because God already knows what God is going to do. And I trust God. You see, prayer is not about making requests. And you know, telling God you want this and this and this and this. God knows what we want. We, we talk to God about our requests because God is our friend. And as you discuss things with your friend, you should be discussing things with God. But if your prayer life is not filling you with peace, you're doing something wrong. And peace comes from saying, I am called to worry not. That, that phrase, be not afraid, do not worry, appears 365 times in the Bible. I am called not to worry in my life, not to have anxiety, not to have fear, but to trust at all times in God. That's what I have to do. Look where we've been through before. And we are in the university of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as his students, we will make it with him as our rabbi. You want to know how I deal with this challenge? You want to know how you should deal with this challenge? Or with this unemployment? Or with this sickness? Or with this problem? Or with this depression? Or with this addiction? Or with this virus that is all around us? Do you want to know how to deal with being broke? With all the people who are making things up about you? or who are jealous of you, or envious, or with that boss, you know, that is, that is looking to bring you down, and that always pokes at you, and, and, is, and, and, and mistreats you. You want to you know how to deal with your family situation, with your personal situation, with your depression, with your addiction, with the divorce, or with the marital situation, or with your children's situation with any problem, any divorce, with the cancer, with any type of thing that you're going through. You want to know how to deal with that? I have learned, I have learned, Paul says, that in whatever state I am in, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk through anything because though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Your staff is with me. My cup overflows. You are there to comfort me. You see, God gives you all that is necessary. He gives you grace to persevere. You shall overcome. If you operate this way in any crisis, if you operate living the way Paul did, learning from the past, in order to know how to look forward to the bright future that God has for you, you will have peace and you will experience joy. And a crisis will not be a crisis, but an opportunity. And it's all about your reaction your reaction to the situation that you find yourself in. If your reaction is to overblow it and to say, how am I going to get through this and to get paralyzed? Then yeah, it will become a crisis. So it's not the situation, but your reaction to it. Like a lady in Sonoma, right after I was ordained a priest, I was in Sonoma, a very affluent community in Northern California in the wine country. And I met a lady, this was right after the crash of, the, of 2008, when there were all these foreclosures and she had her home foreclosed upon. And she says, in, in one day I met her and she says, Father, please pray for me and my family. Our life is over. We had our house foreclosed upon. 
We are going to have to move into an apartment. Our life is over. The life we know is done. I'm on all these antidepression medications. I'm so filled with anxiety. I don't know how we will make it. And I felt so bad for her. And I, I was praying and I was saying, Lord, this is such a terrible situation. And I felt all of this pain and I could see how pained she was and how paralyzed she became and how truly that situation presented a crisis that robbed her of her peace and she had no joy in her life. And that same day, God slapped me because I was filled with that, those same feelings. And I met a lady and she says, when I told her, how are things in your life? I said, how are you? And she says, well, Father, we're going to have to move into an apartment because we lost our home. It was foreclosed upon. And I felt so terrible. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. This is so terrible. I feel so bad for you. And she looks at me and it was her reaction that changed me forever. Because she says, Father, who cares about a house that we had here on earth? When God has a mansion prepared for me in heaven, I made it through before, she said. I made it through all sorts of adversities and problems, and I will make it through this. You see, it was her reaction to the situation that did not produce a crisis, but an opportunity. It wasn't a crisis, but an opportunity to grow and it was her flashback that gave her the forecast of the beautiful future she was to have with Christ. It's how she, two ladies with two different ways of looking at the same situation in their life. Now, the Chinese word for crisis, and you know we're going through a, uh, a crisis right now, so many people are saying. And it's become a big crisis for them. And we also hear a lot about China. So that's why I want to bring this to you. The Chinese word for crisis is made up of two characters, danger and opportunity. An obstacle, but also an opportunity. Like for me as a priest right now, this is not a crisis. This is an opportunity for me, like no other, where I'm growing in ways that I have not grown in my 10 years as a priest. I was extremely down in having to experience the life of a priest right after I left Las Vegas and being in a situation where so much of what I was doing up to now, up to this moment, was all about the business aspect of the church. Dealing with so many people who just wanted sacraments and sacraments and thinking that they were okay by just having a sacrament, but not really seeking growth. And it was getting me down and especially having to spend so much of my time all devoted to the business aspect of being a pastor of a church. And now I feel more alive than I ever have. I'm growing in ways I feel like I've gotten back to the essence of what I feel my calling is, my vocation, which is to preach and to teach, to open the word. An opportunity has opened up for me like no other right now, particularly with all the ministry that I'm doing in teaching you and in preaching to you and in breaking open the word for you to bring you some good news that you can use. I look at this as a great opportunity. And I have a forecast of a brighter future after this is all over because of my flashback through all that I've been through. And I thank God for this moment. And that's why my prayers are answered right now because my prayers are done with supplication and with thanksgiving. 
I raise them to the Lord and I bring them to Him with prayer and thanksgiving, giving all my prayers to God. And I would like you to do the very same thing, absolutely the same thing as we make our prayers to Christ. So what you call a situation determines how you go through it. Paul is in prison and he says, I rejoice in the Lord and tells us to do the same thing. I say again, rejoice, because he knew he just had a situation. Do you? Do you? Do you know that you just have a situation? It's not permanent. It's just a stop. That's what it is. It's just a stop for us. And we are growing. I am. And that's my prayer for you. And beware of the enemies of joy, like the news that want to fill you with how terrible things are. And when the enemies of joy fill you with thoughts and anxieties and feelings of how terrible things are that might want to rob you of your peace, I want you to do one thing. Oh yeah. I want you, when all these voices, these negative voices, these voices from the devil, fill you with fear and anxiety and worry and depression, I want you to speak a word to them. And you know what the word is? It's Jesus Christ who became flesh. And you speak a word and you open the word. You open the word of God, the Bible, and you read there in chapter 4 of Philippians that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so I'm called to rejoice and you say to all those voices, this is not going to get the best of me. This is not the end. This is not the end of my country. This is not the end of anything. It's nothing but a situation. This may be big, but my God is bigger. As I bless you today, I want you to be filled with peace today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.